Hi, I'm Ems, aka on Deck and Wings. In this video, I'll be showing you how to better utilize your wet palette. Some of these tips and tricks I'm sharing with you, you might already know, some of them you might not, so let's get cracking. So firstly, I wanted to share with you the tip I think is most important, and that is that the majority, if not all, of the paper that comes with pre-done wet palettes or the things you can buy which are already cut up aren't good for wet palettes. Ironically, this paper isn't suited for acrylic paints which you use for miniatures, it's actually better suited for heavy bodied thick paints which you would use on a canvas. This type of paper won't leave your acrylics as moist as you want them to. This type of paper isn't completely useless, but the one I'm going to show you is so much better. This type of paper as well, you'll start to see matter and pieces come off it, only ever so slightly, but it's very noticeable on 28mm models compared to a canvas. That's why I recommend using plain parchment paper. I use this Reynolds stuff, but you can probably find it cheaper elsewhere if you wanted to. I'll put a link to where I get this from in the description below. Another thing I wanted to add when it comes to the parchment paper, I like to cut it slightly smaller than the palette itself. I know this means you won't be utilising the entirety of the palette itself. However, if the paper is right up to the edges, it tends to curl back on itself and it doesn't stick to the sponge as well as it should do. Whereas if it's away from the edges, it tends to be submerged into the water better and stick to the sponge. I like to add water after the piece of paper is down and then what I can do is smooth it out with a piece of card. No matter how moist your wet palette is, it can still dry out, especially under hot hobby lamps. To get around this, I have some water in a squirty container, or a pipette will do as well. That way you can gently squirt some along the sides and it'll be absorbed by the sponge. Also, our parchment paper, being slightly shorter than the palette, comes in handy here as well. So here's the next tip I wanted to talk about actually adding paint to the palette. It's a good idea to be organised with your palette, so I like to have an area called my reload zones. I like to use my main paints around the sides and the top. Ideally I find that the more you get into painting, the bigger the palette you'll want to have, either buying it or making it yourself. Bigger palettes just allow you to be more expressive and to mess around with things more and be more technical. The paints at the top we aren't going to mess with, we're going to leave them as they are. We're going to take some paints from it and then we'll start to mix and water and blend things down in the middle. The paints at the top are in a large blob, and large blob of paints on a wet palette don't tend to dry out as much as thin down paint. That's why we aren't going to touch them, we're just going to start taking paint from them and playing around with it. Obviously that paint might eventually deplete and you'll have to add more from the bottle, but it just means less work and having to keep adding more paint to the palette all the time. So I wash my brush as you can see and grab some red, and then I'm mixing those colours together away from the two main sources. You can then grab other paints and start mixing them in on the other side so you can utilise different gradients and colours and shades in one area. Don't be afraid to add more water to these mixes as well. The wet palette alone isn't always enough. My next tip is when it comes to using Citadel paints rather than have to redo all the bottles you can just get an old brush which you have stick that in, get a good blob of it and put it onto the palette. Again, like I said, the more together in a blob the paint is on your wet palette, the less likely it is to dry out. Also, an older brush is better when you're mixing a lot of paint together in a big batch on the palette. You obviously want the paint to mix super well and you don't want to ruin your good brushes in the process. Even though you are using a wet palette, you can still use thinning mediums like lamium medium or glaze mediums. They still come in handy and sometimes get better results than water alone. But it's still a good idea to use a wet palette because it keeps your paints moist and you don't have to keep refilling them. I personally like to make my own with a 50-50 mix of matte medium and glaze medium. It makes a similar sort of concoction as lamium medium. And it's a good idea to have some of this on your palette to the side. So the same principle applies again, get a bit of your paint, clean your brush, get the medium, put it on, mix it, 
Obviously, I didn't clean it there, but you get the idea. Medium thinners can sometimes be better than pure water alone. You might get a better consistency, and it's more opaque. It's a bit more predictable than just using water, in my opinion. Just one last little thing, and I know this might not apply to everyone, but when I'm sealing my wet palette, I don't close it all the way. I leave a little bit of a gap. This is because condensation builds up for me, and this might be the case for you. So to avoid that, I don't close it fully. I leave a little bit of a gap. So those are some personal tips I've learned over the years of painting. If you have any of your own, please leave them in the comments below. Remember to enjoy your hobbies for yourself. Respect that people enjoy them in their own ways. And at the end of the day, they're just war dollies. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.